Hi guys, gonna be a quick video. This is um, I get asked um, um, a fairly frequent question: How do I get my colours looking so smooth, and how do I get my edge highlights um, so crisp and thin? Well, the secret is not being uh, uh, a very good painter. Uh, it's not the fact that you've been painting for ten years, or one year, or two years, or however long. It's the uh, how you apply the paint to the miniature and um, how you um, work with your brush um, first of all I'm going to go over this paint here now if you started using the game color range that's brilliant um, I'm, I'm all for that um, you get more paint uh, than you do with the GW paints uh, for less money so you know that's always a good thing um, but as you'll notice with this paint you'll see uh, a, light, a light green there and darker green there it's where the um, medium in the uh, paint is separated um, so you need to really give them a good shake that's what I'm doing now and it should be fairly mixed and a fairly even colour now give it a bit more now um, these paints are pretty even when it comes to um, let's just do that there uh, pretty even in uh, coverage uh, with the GW ones uh, and um, the, the results are, again are fairly similar it's just that you have to work a little harder with them at first now I want to show you why if we look in the palette, palette here even though I actually stirred um, uh, sorry shook the uh, paint vigorously uh, you can see I've, I've poured it in the palette then you can see the paint separated so if I stir it around we should get it back to a, a nice even consistent color but you'll find that you frequently do that with a game color unless you add um, additives into it um, and also I've got a miniature here um, the beginner, the beginner gamer um, generally will paint from the pot or paint straight onto the miniature uh, I never do that there's a two, well, two or three reasons one it's going to obscure all the nice fine detail that you've um, you've you know you've paid a lot of money on these miniatures we all know they're not cheap and the last thing you want to do is you know spoil them really and uh, it's and if someone spoils a miniature and when they're a, a, a beginner or even people that have been in it for a while it's not because they're not good painters it's because they're really informed um, example um, this paint in the pot here I've squirted a drop in there and if I leave this for I don't know five ten minutes it's gonna dry up <clears throat> I'm gonna add a couple of drops of water Okay, now the life of this paint has been extended in this uh, palette at least two or three times. Um, obviously there's way better ways of doing this, there's wet palettes, but f for this one um, I'm just going over little steps basically to, to improve um, your paint results. Also, um, with watering down the paint, we're able to get way more control over where the paint flows and how it flows. Um, so I've got this miniature in my hand here <laughs> and I just want to paint the tip of his nose here see a nice thin coat um, if I wanted to uh, paint his whole face um, with a colour when it wasn't thinned I wouldn't have any control over where the paint glooped and globbed um, example his eyes in here if I was trying to paint uh, his eyes with thick paint I wouldn't have a, a nice thin tip it'd be hard for me to get in there uh, another thing is let the brush work for you rather than you um, paint the miniature um, I really didn't explain that um, how I wanted to basically if we go back over to the uh, palette here I'm going to um, roll my brush now on this palette and I'll show you why I do that it will give me a, an absolutely perfect tip 
one of the brushes and I'm going to go over to this piece of paper here that I've been experimenting on earlier um, and let's try and get close I can have perfect control now over how thick or thin I want the line okay now um, if I actually did that by just dipping my paint in it's too much paint on it's loaded up too much and also um, you run the risk of it getting into the ferrule and ruining your brush now you can see there's paint on on, on the uh, metal part of my brush here and um, so so I'm not no um, goody goody if you, if you like when it comes to looking after my brushes but I'd always advise just dipping your t uh, tip of your brush in if possible but anyway let's let's go to uh, seeing this now I've not rolled my brush and I've not controlled how much paint's loaded in uh, to the tip of my brush so let's just go into that now see and I'm going to find it really hard controlling how much paint comes off so you can see for example here let's get my finger in for just reference of how thin the line is to here move it over and that is just the same brush same paint same thickness of water and that's just by controlling how much paint gets on the tip now, it's silly things like that that can alter um, uh, the quality of your miniature controlling how much paint goes on your brush and rolling your brush um, if you if you want to start painting faces with thin coats and sorry I'm just trying to find my green again if you want to start painting faces with nice thin coats and getting good results the easiest way to start doing that is rolling your brush you can control how much paints on there you can also check the uh, flow of the paint and you can also check the thickness of the paint before actually hitting it on the miniature I mean that's what I do nine times out of ten especially if I'm like I say working on a face or something that's very very important to the overall look of the miniature I'll make sure that the, the thickness of the paint is right and the consistency um, also there's another trick as well that um, you may have seen paint as use um, but may have not have been explained because they do it so instinctively that they don't necessarily um, go over the technique of doing it um, example on the hood of this um, goblin here let's try and get him in so he's there we go I could try and highlight the edge here like this okay and it'd be very very hard to get exactly um, the thickness that I wanted and and the right shape of, of the hood um, I could do it as well as, as everyone out there but it would take a lot longer and a lot more effort but if you actually use the brush against the miniature so you're literally placing the edge of the brush against the the hood it will follow the line for you so let's have a look there and then on the top and that took a few seconds and it gave me a perfect line it's not always possible but nine times out of ten you can literally angle the miniature however you want to to get the finish you want like there if I was edging it I'd just do that and I'd literally use the miniature to find the edge for me rather than me find, painting the edge so I'm letting the model work for me so we do the same there, the same there, the same there. See? Now obviously I'm doing this in front of a camera and I'm talking and I'm not concentrating, but you can see that there's no effort involved in finding that edge there. So it's the silly little things that you'll find on YouTube when you see these people that, you know, 
masters if you like of their craft um, but they do silly things um, not necessarily silly things a little handy uh, techniques and tips and tricks that uh, uh, allow them to achieve really nice results without putting that much effort in right um, that's it for this one guys um, I just wanted to basically clear up a few things when it comes to regards to painting and uh, basically thin your paints always thin your paints um, roll your brush and never load your brush with too much paint unless you're you know base coating or washing your miniature and uh, control, control the flow of paint and you'll control the quality of your miniature um, thanks for watching guys and uh, catch you on the next one